Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Okay, just had a look at the thing and make sure the camera was rolling. How have you been? Okay, wow, shocking news in the craft world today. I was actually, I have a list of things to uh, to chit chat about. I just kind of keep a list as I go throughout the week. Well, things that might be interesting to talk about on Saturday in our happy crafty place on the internet. And um, so I'm like, Scrolling through the internet, I was actually on Facebook. I feel like I reference Facebook an awful lot on these sat chats for someone who doesn't spend that much time on it. But a friend of mine um, posted that Consumer Crafts was going out of business. And I'm like, no way, no, it can't be right. So I went to the website and sure enough, as of today, they're not taking any more orders. They're gonna ship the orders that um, they've already taken, but anything, any of their links, just redirect to Michaels. Now, Michaels owns Consumer Crafts. Consumer Crafts is a pretty big, or was, a pretty big um, craft supply store on the internet. I ordered stuff from them quite a bit. Uh, I don't think I've ordered anything since December. I ordered um, like floral foam for my kissing balls that I make. I ordered, um, oh, I ordered the red, the little red craft trolley that, that I have stuff. Oh, I can, I can move, I can show you what I ordered here. I ordered like this little red craft trolley. It was 20 bucks and, um, and I am wearing shorts. I think I'm just running around in a shirt in my basement. That would be creepy. Um, and I ordered like another one of those carts for my daughter's room. I just, I mean, 20 bucks, couldn't, couldn't pass it up. I've ordered lots of art supplies and craft supplies from them. They would just run fantastic sales. The regular prices were always good and they would just run crazy sales. Like, you know, you'd spend so much and you'd get 10%, you spend more, you get 20% off, you spend more, you get 30% off. And so like what I would do is I would just wait for one of those sales and I would just stock up on everything I was low on. They always had like your basic craft supplies, like, you know, felt and pipe cleaners and beads and googly eyes and all that stuff, but they also started carrying art supplies. And um, I think the last big order I placed for art supplies was probably, I'm thinking it was either one summer ago or two summers ago. I can't remember. I think it was probably two summers ago. They had uh, just gotten tons of M. Graham and Daniel Smith watercolors in, and um, they had another one of those deals where you buy so much and you get like 20 or 30 percent off your entire order and so I went through my, all my M. Graham paints, all my palettes, saw what I was low on, where I didn't have tubes for that I'd used up and I just reordered stuff, reordered a few colors I wanted to try like a Thalo Blue Red Shade which honestly was not very reddish. It did not look like ultramarine blue but anyway that's neither here nor there. I ordered a bunch of stuff and it was a crazy price for things. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. You know it just seemed like how could they be making any money on that? And maybe that's why they're going out of business. I don't know. But about a year ago, I noticed they started putting restrictions on things like um, if there were coupons, then you couldn't use them on sale prices. You couldn't use them on um, there were a lot of manufacturers. I think they're putting up restrictions on what you could um, have discounts on. Like there'd be like like Core, the watercolor company and Golden and stuff. They would set like a like a, a floor of like, you cannot sell it be below this price. So like you couldn't use coupons on those things, which, you know, um, I think if you're buying something just cause you have a coupon for it, it's really not a great idea anyway, but, um, but it is awfully tempting. There's like a little core, like that half pin watercolor palette. I've wanted to, I don't need it. I have all the colors and tubes, but you know, the monkey mind, the want monster wants that palette and, but it's 60 bucks for 12 little half pans. And, uh, I have the colors and tubes, so it's like I can't justify it unless it was a really good sale. <laughs> and uh, and I'd always check, you know, and it would always be excluded. But anyway, yes, I'm a cheapskate. Um, and I'm probably part of the problem of why craft stores are going out of business, and I feel bad about that. Um, but I also feel like we've kind of been trained, you know, to, to expect that, to expect these, like, crazy coupons, to expect, at least as an American craft consumer, um, and that maybe, you know, maybe it just got to the point where they couldn't make up in volume what they were losing in profit margin. Um, I don't know, that's speculation. I know, like, uh, I think it was in April, I got an email from um, Share a Sale, which, like, I, like, probably most of the YouTubers and bloggers that you follow on the internet uh, have some affiliate programs, meaning, like, I might use a product and I put an affiliate link and if you click on that affiliate link, it takes you to the website. And if you happen to purchase it or purchase something else after clicking it, then I get a small commission from uh, from sending you there, basically. And um, they took their affiliate, they paused their affiliate program back in April for like a month. Maybe but it might have been like, it might have been two months. It was quite a while. And I thought, well, that's really kind of, well, I thought it was kind of, um, kind of awful to do that during the pandemic when so many, um, 
so many bloggers and freelancers and publishers are relying on the, that affiliate money when like other advertisers would have dropped out and I mean you're only getting paid on what you refer basically so it's not you know so there if, if you're making money they're making more money basically is is um is how that works right it's like being a car salesman you you sell a car you get a percentage of that um so I just thought that was kind of uh that was kind of too bad because you know I know a lot of uh a lot of well, there's a lot of bloggers out there. They're women. They are contributing to their household income. Uh, some of their husbands have been laid off. And it's like, you know, that's a really kind of crappy time to be doing that to people. And um, and just, it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. And I'm sure it did other bloggers as well. And, you know, I bet they got a lot less referrals during that time because, you know, it's it's kind of like saying you're fired. You know, you're not you know, worth, you know, you're not worth it to us. You know, they didn't explain why they were pausing it, like, we're having some financial trouble, we need to reorganize, we, you know, thank you for all you've done, but we need to pause our program. And the affiliate link still worked while they were paused, so people were still buying stuff, you know, people, just the, the, the bloggers weren't earning anything on it. I mean, it's not a huge amount of money either, that's the other thing, it's not a huge amount of money, so, I mean, that also kind of made me feel bad, it's like, it's not like they're shelling out, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars to these bloggers, I mean, it's a, it's a few bucks here, a few bucks there, it's not it's not huge, but I guess, you know, times all these bloggers, but also if these people aren't referring traffic to them anymore, then, you know, they're ultimately going to take a bigger hit than just paying out the, you know, 8% or whatever it was for, uh, for the bloggers. So I kind of thought that was kind of strange, but you know, I didn't know what was going on. I thought maybe they were trying to not have so many orders during the pandemic because they didn't want to bring in so many employees and want to send their people home and keep them safe. So that's, you know, I always like to look for, um, the positive, like, instead of just jumping to conclusions of, like, why, you know, some big corporate company would, you know, would, uh, you know, screw over the little guy, I always try to say, okay, what, maybe they're trying to do something good, maybe they're trying to keep their order volume down low so they don't have to have that many people in the warehouse, and all of that. Uh, Consumer Crafts is owned by Michaels, in case you didn't know that, or in case I didn't mention it. Um, so, uh, so a couple years ago, when they closed Pat Catan's down, which was another, like, uh, it was, like, an independently owned franchise, company, it seemed like a lot of fine art supplies flooded into consumer crafts, and I think that's probably when I did my last really big order. Um, great, great deals, great quality products. I was really excited they were used, that they were selling like art quality supplies, artist quality supplies instead of craft quality stuff, which craft quality stuff is fine. They had a lot of student grade stuff, but they didn't have any really high end stuff. So to be able to get the high end stuff at a really good price at a company I trusted shopping with, I was just really thrilled. Um, and, you know, I would rather shop a smaller a smaller business versus Amazon if I can, if they have what I need, if the prices aren't, you know, crazy. And, um, and, oh, it, it just, it's, it's no more. Uh, so, you know, I keep trying to think, what, how could they not survive? What did, you know, what happened? Everybody's home now. People are trying to buy art supplies. I always saw Consumer Crafts as kind of like a, um, a seller of last resort. I don't know if that's what they were or not, but it seemed like they always had products that were released like a year ago they it always seemed like they got the stuff later than everything else so I didn't know if they were kind of like a clearinghouse or a surplus salvage type operation where they would just take in all the stuff that that was left over in the market and sell it really cheap or what but um but they you know everything I got from them was always in great shape it was always brand new and I was always happy with everything I got um, and they, anytime I, I, uh, had any, like, correspondence with people there, it was always wonderful. So I'm just really sad to see them go, and I'm just wondering what the heck happened. Um, I, they always had, like, embossing folders on sale for, like, two bucks. Um, just very, very affordable craft supplies, and it, it kind of made me wonder, you know, if they can't make it, what is, what's going on in the craft industry? How, how, how bad has it gotten? Because I feel like I'm in a bubble, like, I can't really tell what's, what's going on, on the ground in like a craft store or whatnot. I figure that most of craft purchases from the average crafter, um, not somebody that's on the internet all the time, scooping up tutorials, like, you know, shopping online stores, you know, just the average crafter uh, is probably shopping at the big box stores or a local craft store in the community if they have one. And they're, you know, just they're just picking from what's on the shelf. They're not like, uh, you know, really looking for new interesting products. They're kind of like, you know, just, grabbing what they see that they like and taking it home and taking it home and crafting with them. So um, when I see big, big chains go out of business, it, it kind of makes me wonder about the overall health of the craft industry and the art industry. But something that I found also very interesting is that the different art supply companies that I've been working with over the past um, 
the past six months or so, they haven't had a hard time selling product. They've had, they've had more of a hard time getting product in, getting their shelves stocked because there's been such an influx of people wanting to buy art supplies. I'm just surprised that people aren't buying the craft supplies as much because I would think that crafting is a... Uh, a genre that's more inclusive to more people, like everybody can, um, or everybody believes that they can make a craft or they can craft with their kids. Not everybody believes that they can paint a painting or that they can um, sculpt a sculpture. So I would think that, that craft stores would just be uh, made in the shade at, during a time like this when people are home and they have time, but um, but apparently not. And especially a, a store like Consumer Crafts, which has really great prices, great selection. If they can't make it, they're owned by Michaels, for goodness sake, uh, which is in pretty much every market in the country. Um, if they can't make it, what sort of hope is there for uh, for the independent retailers? Or maybe independent real retailers are more set because they don't have as much um, you know, as much on the line, they don't have as much debt, they don't have as many as employees, yada, yada, yada. I did see that Michaels is going to be laying off 146 employees in the, in the Ohio, I don't know what town in Ohio they're in, but in Ohio, um, that's where the Pat Catans were headquartered. They closed, they bought those stores and closed them down. Um, now Consumer Crafts is closing down and they're going to be closing down the Doris line, which is like, um, it's like a wholesale, you'll probably see Doris, you see Doris in Michael's stores. I'm thinking there were Doris products in Joanne as well. Um, and a lot of the Doris products look just like the Nicole products that used to be sold at AC Moore. So I always wondered if they were somewhat affiliated. If you guys know, let me know in the comments below, because I swear I saw, I've seen stuff that were branded uh, like with a Love Nicole line that were just the same as ones I saw branded as Doris um, on Consumer Crafts. So um, they might, I wonder if they were kind of like, if if that, if the Doris company maybe uh, private labeled for other companies, or maybe they both got their stuff private labeled from some other company. I don't know, but it just seemed like there was a real, a real uh, similarity there. Like, like there's one company that makes all the private labeled stuff for all the big box stores and they just put a different name on it. I don't know. Um, but, but it de definitely seemed like that could be the case. I'm not going to say it's the case because I don't know, but it just kind of seemed that way. Like I'm looking over there. I see like, I've got some Doris dies. Uh, I'm just sticking out of my dye box. That's really going to be a bummer. They had some really great, cute designs or very inexpensive, um, very high quality too. And they look just like the Nicole dies that I was getting at, uh, at AC Moore. So, um, if you know if there's a connection there, please let me know in the comments below. But I just think it's really sad. It's sad to see another one bite the dust. It's sad to see that Doris is going to be closed in November and uh, more people are going to be out of jobs and probably people are, you know, working at these places. I don't know. I can just imagine if you're working at a company that sells craft supplies, that it would be a pretty good place to work because you think that like, if you have a company selling craft supplies, that you are, you're doing it because you love it. You know, it's not, you're not selling, you know, you're not selling, you know, the staff of life here. You're selling the stuff that makes life fun. And, you know, you would just think that that would be, it'd be just really sad to, to, uh, have to lose a job like that. Um, so it's sad to lose any job in this economy because things, you know, have been kind of, uh, kind of turbulent, very turbulent lately, but I just couldn't believe it. I'm just, I'm still shocked because I literally just read that news like, um, 30 minutes ago before, you know, and I was like, oh my gosh, that I, and it, I just wiped out everything else I was going to talk about. I'm like that I have to talk about first. So please let me know in the comments below, uh, what you've heard, what you think. Um, I was so sad when AC Moore announced that they were closing. It was just like, like I had shopped AC Moore, um, and then it was like literally, the, and there was everything was fine and roses. And the next week, I see that they're closing. And supposedly, we're going to get a Michaels in Bangor where the AC Moore closed because I think that Michaels took over the leases for some of the AC Moore stores. And uh, now I don't know. I mean, I don't know uh, where everything's been closed down from COVID nineteen. Uh, how that leaves a big company like that? I mean, if they've got debts, if they, and they can't have their stores open to sell things, then. Um, then what are they to do? I mean, they're still pay paying rent on those properties and uh, they have to honor their leases and, you know, they have to accept shit that they've contracted, I imagine. So, I mean, that's why it's so shocking that a place like Consumer Crafts can't make it because they were all online and people could still shop during the pandemic and they're always open and they don't have like the, the restrictions of being closed like the brick and mortar stores do. And I wouldn't think they'd have as much overhead. Um, and they were they market heavily too. I mean, I would get emails several times a week. A lot of times, at least once a week, I'd click on one just to see, you know, what's new. If there's anything I couldn't live without, 
but um but it kind of makes you think if maybe the race to the bottom that these stores have been this trajectory these stores have been on has kind of like uh it's kind of hit that point of no return where you know you'd put your embossing folders on sale for two dollars and people are used to paying six or seven dollars for an embossing folder so you know they buy up as many as they can get of different designs. And I mean, how many times can you do that before people are like, ah, that, that sale will come along again, before people like adjust their expectations for that being the regular price of something. Um, and maybe it's the influx of, of uh, you know, cheaper supplies on Amazon. Maybe it's sites like Wish and AliExpress that have been popping up selling inexpensive supplies. I. I honestly don't shop that much. I haven't shopped um, Wish or AliExpress. I do shop on Amazon mainly because I trust that my credit card information isn't going to be stolen where I don't trust those other sites. And I haven't heard anything where anyone's credit cards information have been stolen. I don't want to slander anyone. People that have shopped at those other sites have positive things to say. I just haven't. Um, I've also heard that there's some sort of like intellectual property problems over there and I just don't want to buy something and find out it's counterfeit and then encourage other people to go there and hurt um, like an original designer, you know what I mean? Uh, but I'm not going to tell anybody else what to do because that's none of my business. Um, and I do know there are there are legit sellers over there because I know a lot of sellers that sell on Amazon also sell over there. Uh, especially sellers from overseas, you know, that, that use Amazon as their shipping, you know, they're selling on these other platforms too, because, you know, they're going to, they're going to try to, you know, reach as many people around the globe as they can. They're in business. That's, you know, what they do. Um, so anyway, that just like, I, that just totally stunned me today. Are you as surprised and shocked as I am? Uh, I'm really, I'm sad. I ordered a couple times a year from that store and, um, and it's just, it's going to be too bad that they're not there anymore. Uh, I recommended the store to people. It was always fun to see what they got in because it was kind of like Martin's, which is a store in Maine, which you never know what you're going to see um, because they'd always have unusual things and great prices. So it always it just kind of reminded me of a Martin's where you never know what you're going to find at Consumer Crafts. They would like a lot of times this stuff was like a year or two old um, or something that was might have been trendy uh, a few years ago. But there it is. Um, so it's just kind of fun to kind of hunt around and see what you could find. Uh, and it's um, and it's no more, but maybe nobody else found it all that amusing. Or maybe they didn't make enough profit per item to make it worthwhile. Or maybe it was, you know, maybe it was doing all right, but the company needed to reallocate stuff to make other parts of their business grow. I don't know. It would be so interesting to hear why they chose to do that. But because they're closing down the Doris, like, product line, which was like the Studio 71 markers, all those embossing folders and dies, um, all like general craft supplies, like felt, I think, yeah, I think they had like felt and cardstock and, um, you know, even, I think they even had like pattern papers. They had so much. They had like for every major craft category, Doris had a line of products like sequins, beads, all of that stuff. A lot of just the general craft supplies that isn't necessarily a name brand to compare to. Like, so if you were going to go, you know, get some supplies for your kids to, um, to craft with during summer vacation, you wanted pom-poms and pipe cleaners and felt and fun foam and, um, like all those different kind of basic craft basics, you know, tacky, well, maybe not, not like Aileen's tacky glue, but you know, like a, a white glue, all those different things, probably 75% of what you bought would be Doris because, you know, those, those basic, like googly eyes, those basic things, just, you know, they're not like you're comparing them against a brand name. That's what, that's what they are. That's what they sell. Um, and to see like a big, a big player like that getting close, that's, that's just like, what's going on? What is life? What is happening? It's, it's crazy. Um, I'm wondering if somebody's going to come in and fill their shoes or maybe just the craft market has shrunk so much or been so div like just so spread out over so many little companies that um, there's going to be hard for anyone to make a living. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, the, and a, in a stark contrast, though, talking to art suppliers, companies that do mainly art supplies um, online, the like pretty big retailers, they can't keep their stock their stuff in stock. They could sell probably ten times what they're selling if they could get more product on the shelves. Uh, just looking at like affiliate reports, the art supply stores are doing great. Um, some craft supply stores are doing, or some like I would say niche like stamp stores are doing pretty well too. Um, and just according to my affiliate reports, I can't speak overall. All I know is just like you know the reports that I get access to, which are my own. I don't know what anybody else's are, but. Um, 
but it seems like some of those like higher end niche stamp stores are doing pretty well. Um, you know, the big box art supply stores are doing really well. The uh, art manufacturers, like the, you know, there's so many smaller companies coming out, like just kind of private labeling stuff. Uh, those are doing really well because I think they're a much cheaper alternative to like the, the tried and true name brands such as, you know, Windsor & Newton and uh, Faber-Castell and, uh, and you know, the, the bigger names that you've just heard of for hundreds and hundreds of years, these smaller players are, are kind of coming in and really hitting the market hard and, uh, and, you know, getting, getting a lot of, getting a lot of results. So, uh, I hope that doesn't mean that these bigger companies are going to go away. Um, that would be too bad because I think there's a place for everyone but um, but it's just it's just sad. It's sad to see sad to see a company close down like that, especially one that I've ordered from. But then you also think it's like okay, that twenty dollar cart. What did that cost to make? Maybe that cost twenty four dollars to make, and they were you know they're selling it for less than they paid, or maybe it cost you know eighteen dollars to make, and they're only making two dollars from that. But because it was also free shipping, you know they're actually losing money. You know, you don't know. I mean, they could be taking a lot of losses on what they're actually shipping out in hopes that they're going to make up for it overall. Like in the amount of people they entice to order, they're hoping they're going to make up what they've lost on some orders for others. As shoppers are so savvy now that um, you know nobody wants to pay for shipping, but also nobody wants to pay more than what something's worth. And you can't blame people. And I think we were very. It's very hard to realize or understand what anything is even worth anymore because. You know, if stores have 50% off coupons all the time, you kind of think, well, then that probably only should cost about 50% of what it is when the coupons were really just kind of meant to entice people in to get one, you know, to use a coupon and then hopefully they'll they'll buy enough at regular price or at a lesser discount so they can make up for it. And maybe they're not. Maybe these stores aren't making up the difference uh, once they've paid for their, you know, employees and their lease and, and all of that. I know, well, I haven't been to a store. I feel like I haven't left the house in so long. <laughs> it's been a long time, guys. Um, I need a haircut. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, anytime I, I would go into a store, now I could be going in at odd hours because if I'm like popping into a craft store, it's usually just because um, I'm curious to see what they have. Sometimes I need an actual thing, but I mean, I've got so much stuff. I usually have something I can substitute if I don't have the exact thing I need. Um, so, and apologies for all the ums. I'm just, I'm just like, this is completely not what I was intending to talk about today, but I just had to like, I had to be like, blah, brain dump. Um, you know, it's never busy, you know, and I noticed like so many of the craft stores have turned into like seasonal decor uh, stores more so than actual crafting products and art products that uh, I think that's a turn off to crafters. But I can also see on the other hand that they need to bring more people in than just hobbyists in order to justify that big space, to pay their employees, to get enough people through the door. And these, these stores are never crowded at least not in the times that I've stopped in them. And, you know, granted, we don't even have a Michaels in Bangor. Hopefully we will get one, but honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if, if they're closing Consumer Crafts, I wouldn't be surprised that they're just gonna, like, kibosh any of the plants to take over any of the old AC Moore stores. Of course, this is speculation. I have no idea. I don't know anybody that works at Michaels or uh, Doris or Consumer Crafts or any of that, but, um, but that's a speculation. And I can also see how, why Hobby Lobby probably fought so hard to stay open during the pandemic because they probably were seeing their their fellow um, store owners, like big box stores, kind of falling and and not being able to survive, and they probably didn't want to be among the wreckage. So, um, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's one of the reasons they fought so hard to stay open. But um, I haven't been to any craft stores in like I don't know. It seems like forever. It's been since February, I think, maybe even longer. I don't even know. Um, I was just really bummed when AC Moore closed that, you know, I haven't had the heart to go into, like, Joann's or anything. So let me look at what time we're at. Oh my gosh, 24 minutes. We've been talking about this for so long. I guess this will be the only topic for today. Um, so what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. That was just shocking. Um, yeah, anything I have here can wait. Oh, my signature sets at Jerry's Autorama are back in stock. The watercolor ones are anyway. The oils won't be back in stock for another couple months, but uh, if you're waiting for the Turner or Lucas watercolor sets, they are in stock now because art supply stores cannot keep the product on the shelves because it's just selling out so fast. Um, 
So yeah, everything else will have to wait till next week. Thank you so much for hanging out. And I want to know what you think in the comments below because I'm just like so shocked and I want to see what you, I want to hear what you think. I want to carry on this conversation because if anyone has any more information, I'm just, I'm so darn nosy because I'm stuck in my house and I got nothing better to do than to be nosy about somebody else's business, I guess. But um, I'm very sad. I wish all the people that work at Consumer Crafts uh, and Doris the best of luck. I hope you find um, fulfilling work, new jobs quickly, and um, I hope they treat you well uh, as things are closing down because um, I've always enjoyed shopping. I've enjoyed all the Doris products that I've used and I've enjoyed shopping at Consumer Crafts for the past uh, probably decade or so. Uh, and I'm really sad to see them go. So uh, best of luck to everyone that, that's worked there and um, big hugs. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.